Hi, this is Colin Rennie here. Welcome to another video on the basics of Rhino modeling. And today I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about the uh, solid tools and the solid edit tools that we have in here. Some of these are new to Rhino 5 and some of them are, are in Rhino 4 but they're very, buried very, very deeply um, underneath uh, the solid tools menus. Um, so these tools are, some of them are very very powerful, some of them are very useful, um, some of them you need to be careful with but um, as, as we found out in the previous video on fillets and the problems we can get when we start boolean objects together using the fillets but uh, most of these tools will work poorly on solids. Um, I'm going to show you some of these, I'll, I'll, I'll leave shelling to a, another video a little bit later on, this is the shell tool here, I'll show you that one a little bit later. Um, so what we're going to do first is to uh, create some geometry to work with and I'm going to be working predominantly in perspective view again. I'll start with standard uh, and I'm going to start with polyline and I'm going to create a five-sided pentagonal form such as that and I can now extrude that surface straight up vertically. I want to create a solid, solid tools and this one is extrude, extruding that one straight up like that. So there's one object to work with. But say I wanted to um, start even more basically than that, just with a simple box extrusion. And I wanted to kind of get to something a little bit like that on the left hand side. Um, but I, I wasn't going to cut these things up, I was going to try it in a different way. And there are ways you can manipulate the surfaces. So what I'll do first is to, uh, to move edges. So I'm going to use move edge. Um, move edge is this one here and move edge will allow you to move the edges of an object around to create different geometry move edge here select the edges to move that's the edge I want to move and press enter when done direction constraint equals none you can make uh, the direction constraint normal to one of the surfaces or an average face normal so let's try average face normal enter and then what that's doing is it's taking kind of a 45 degree angle from both uh, both of the face normals if the box is straight. So that's created something a little bit closer. But this, this one here has got five, and this one here has got four. So how do I create five edges here, or five surfaces here around the outside of this? Uh, well, there's actually a tool to do that, um, and that's split face, which is this one here. My split face, there it is split planar face. So if I want to split this face up, I can do that. I can say, all right, I want to split this. Select face to split. Well, I want to split this face. Press enter when done. I want to split it from the mid to the mid. Press enter when done. Now I've actually split that up. You can see that because the line down the center is slightly darker. And now I've got, I could, I could say, now is this, going to, is this going to move as an edge? Well, we'll try it. Enter. And I'm going to say, let's move that one out. Well, yeah, it does. It moves out. So I'm starting to create some of the uh, closer geometry to this one here, just by moving the edges. You can also move faces. So this one is move face. Take this one. Again, we have direction constraint equals, this one is equals normal. So that's moving normal to the original surface. But if I turn the direction constraint off, I can say I want to move, not that face, I want to move this face. Enter, and direction constraint equals none. Enter. I didn't move it there. I can take it from the end, and now, now I can move it around much more arbitrarily. And you can see it's got five sur five edges now, five surfaces, five uh, faces around the edge, um, just like the other one that I built with the polygon. Um, so that's one of the things you can do with uh, with moving edges around, but that's fairly basic. If you wanted to get a little bit more sophisticated, there are a few more things you can do. You can fold planar surfaces, um, you can extrude faces, but the ones I'm interested in are a little bit more complicated than that. What I want to do is to uh, to create some morphing geometry from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, an angled cut here, I'm going to move an edge again, but this time I'm going to, sorry, not move an edge, I'm going to, I'm going to move a face, but this time I'm going to split a planar face, split this planar face here, but rather than doing it vertically, I'm going to do it at an angle using near snaps. Uh, so now I have that split into two faces, so now I can move one face, this one here for example. I've got direction constraint equals none, which is fine. Now when I do that, you can see I'm morphing this geometry around. 
changing this geometry and Rhino was trying to bend the surface to fit that geometry. It's trying to create curvature between these two parts here. Um, but it's starting to become a little bit more interesting. But we can extend that interest further. Uh, we can start drawing on the surface of this. And I'm going to use uh, a poly curve, or sorry, a, a control point curve, uh, in order to draw on this surface on the top here. So what I'm going to do is to pick a point on the surface itself. I hold my control key down over my snaps, and I have on surface as an option here, which I can select. So it's asking me for the first surface and I'm going to choose on surface here. Now I'm going to make a mistake deliberately here and show you how to fix it because it's a good little, it's very often happens. I'm going to start on my surface and I'm doing fine. I'm, I've got lots of points coming on my surface here. This is great, no problem at all. You know, and I accidentally picked that one up there and I'm going to go back to this one here. It's fine, lovely. Now you can see there's already a little bit of a problem just in this view. It looks okay, but this side's darker than this side, making me think this side's gone underneath the top surface and indeed it has. The snapped point was taken from the near of this edge here, so that's dropped down off planar from this surface here, which isn't kind of what we want. We want to get this back up there. Um, so we need to fix this, and there are a number of ways of fixing this, but generally they all involve the idea of projecting. And I want to project this curve onto this surface. Um, so if you just type in project, there's other ways of getting to it. I'm going to say project. It says select curves and points to project. So project is the sort of more general one. I select this one here. Press enter when done. It says select surfaces, poly surfaces, or meshes to project onto. Well, I want that poly surface here. Now I don't actually want that whole poly surface. I just want the top surface. So I'm going to try it again. Select curves. That's that one. So let me do the whole thing. Now that's done all the way through. It's actually created two poly surfaces there or two instances of that. So that's um, okay, but probably a little bit too mucky. Um, but I can undo that, and I'll show you another way of doing it. I'll delete this guy here, and I'll delete this guy here. So I have the original curve, uh, which, which I had, this one here. And I want to project that onto this surface here. So let's try it again. Project. It says Delete input equals yes. Select points or curves to project. Well, this curve is one I want to project. Enter and select the surface. Delete input output layer because current delete input loose equals no. Mm. I've deleted the input so I have less to work with. And delete that one there. Now I have a surface that is coplanar with the curve that I'm looking for, which is which is great. So I can now actually use that to split this surface here. Go back to my solid tools and I'm going to split the planar face. This is the face I want to split. This is the curve. Now it's coming up with an option here. I can either draw lines on it or I can choose a curve. I'm going to choose a curve. This is the splitting curve. And now it's gone dark, so it's made me think that I know I've done the right, and I've done it right. Actually, affected the geometry. Now I can pull that one vertically upwards. I'm just going to delete this guy because I don't really need him anymore. I'm, I'm going to move the face. Move face. There's a face here to move. And direction constraint equals none. I'm going to change that to normal, so it goes straight up. I'm going to choose near, and then up. And you can see now that. that has morphed the geometry around. It's morphed that face up. It's given me a, a mountain to work with, which is quite useful uh, for some functions, especially if you wanted to create bulges in surfaces or, or you wanted certain areas with a flat plane but you wanted the rest to morph around it. You can do this in a number of, of ways. You don't have to, if I, if I was to split this face a number of times, um, in fact, we can try that. Let's do another. Um, move another one here. And again I'm going to use on surface here. This is the surface. So I'll make another little hole there and I'm going to split this face again. So solid tools, split face, let's move edge, split planar face. This is the face I want to split. This is the curve I want to split it with. No, I want to use curves, excuse me. This is the face I want to split. This is the curve that I want to split with. And it's now split that into two. 
So let's try moving one but not the other one. So I'm going to move a face here, move this face, and it's normal, which is set already. So we can move that up and let's see what it does. Now it's left that one sitting and done some very odd things with the other side, uh, which can be quite funky. So I can now, if I want to, do the same command with this guy. And that's moved that one up too. So the, the curvature sort of bounces in between these two forms, but can create some interesting structures um, in the way that you do that. You're left with some artifacts that can be a little bit difficult to work with sometimes. Be careful to point edit those though, because if you were to explode this surface here, uh, I'll show you this, so explode this surface, now I have that surface and I, once it's exploded I can access the control points, so I can turn the control points on for this surface. There they all are, look at the, look at the, look at the uh, extent to which those surfaces have gone. You can see the original uh, rectangularity of this, um, this structure, you can see it's been built from a rectangle, and those are all the control points here. Uh, but if we were to say, oh, I want to edit that now, I don't want that lump there, so let's find that lump and we'll go to perspective mode here. I'm going to remove that, so I'm going to drop that down, I'm going to disable my snap so I don't accidentally pop into anything, I'm going to pull that one down here. Great, that's fine, that looks excellent. Okay, the problem with that though is that you will now have split that edge there, and this will no longer be a solid. If I join that together and then try and find its volume, Analyze um, as properties volume. It won't let me do it. Um, the reason it won't let me do it is because I've moved that control point even a little bit. One control point will rip your edges apart. So you need to be very, very careful when you're working with point editing on closed poly surfaces or opening them up because you've exploded them. Um, so if I undo the last move that I did here and put it back together just to check. Analyze, mass properties, volume. I have a volume with that. I didn't after I'd moved one control point. Okay, so uh, what you need to do with that is to have some experimentation time, to practice a little bit, to try some of these uh, these, shift, these shifts, these morphs, see what you can do with some simple geometry starting with that. Remember that that started life off as a, um, a standard cuboid, and I've turned it into um, a, a number of different faces and some of it with uh, compound curvature, some of it with simple curvature. Um, and uh, you can carry on trying experimenting with all of those things. In the next video I'll show you a couple more. Uh, I'll show you how to create t holes and how to work with holes through objects. But I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, take care for now and I will see you soon. Bye for now.